Hello guys, it's Unders. Welcome to the Logic videos. We are going to do one video every single day. This is number one, so this is going to be a quick introduction for those of you who have never really looked at Logic before, the first time you open it, just to show you where a couple of features are and a couple of ways you can navigate around it. Let's get into that. Say my name aloud. Hello guys, so we're now in my default Logic project. Now if these videos are helpful for you, please pop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you've got questions or there are other videos that you would like to see, please comment down below. Now, when I open up Logic, this is the default project that I get. It's uh, a setting that I have built myself, but what we're gonna do today is just have a look around the basics for the first time when you've opened up Logic. So. If we go right to the top left, we've got a relatively standard menu. If you click on Logic Pro X, it's things about Logic and how you want that to be set up. Now, one of the first things you may run into is that you don't know how to get audio out of Logic or it's not set up for your sound card, for example. And that is all handled under preferences. If we then click on audio, it will bring up this menu here and that covers everything else you saw in that preference menu there. As you see, they're listed across the top there. Now, currently my audio device is set to Capto, or Capto, however you want to pronounce it. That is the screen recorder I'm using right now. So if I was to output any audio from Logic, it would be captured by that, and that is why it is set to that. In most cases, you want your audio interface. Now for me, that would be the Universal Audio Apollo here. There's a few other things set up, but they're not important right now. You'd have it set up to whatever your audio interface is and you want that to be the output device and input device assuming that you're having microphones and things going into it if you're not recording in that way you'll still have it set to your input device because it will need to register that for in and out audio signals this gets a little bit more complex if you're using other um, audio interfaces or other microphones for example I can have my output device set to my universal audio but I also have a USB microphone which is the iRig here I can have that set as an input device separately another thing for you guys to look at I have my summing engine set to 32 bit there is a 64 high precision mode however I'm working on quite an old machine it's from 2013 some of the projects I'm mixing at the moment are really large and 32 bit gives me that extra little bit of grunt that I need so that I can get those projects done. 32-bit has been the standard right the way through until uh, 2017 anyway. 64-bit is part of a new update. So if you don't see that in yours, um, you're due an update on Logic and it will be one of the features that is added in. Let's say if you're just starting with Logic, that, that's going to be your, your main preference that you want to look at. Now after that, I would suggest going into advanced and I would turn all of these on. Some of these will be disabled by default. The idea being anyone can pick up Logic and they've got the basic features there. This allows you a lot more um, editing. So the advanced editing functionality, for example, you don't have access to flex pitch without that enabled. Same things happen with audio. You're unable to do destructive audio edits which are very helpful. You want to be able to do destructive audio edits and bounces and things like that. So it's useful to have those turned on. If you're using a MIDI keyboard or you're using something that involves a MIDI through, you'll need to have MIDI enabled as well. I also have control surfaces enabled because I use a complete control S25 keyboard and that works as a control surface as well, allowing DAW control. So show advanced tools. I would recommend we switch that on especially if you've been working on a larger DAW such as Pro Tools or Cubase previously, it's going to unlock a lot of the features that you'll already be in the mindset to be going to. Okay, so along the left-hand side here, we've got some toolbars that bring up key things. Um, if we go into the browser, for example, that's going to show up the library for Logic in terms of uh, effect settings and some of the inbuilt VST presets and things like that. The inspector, which is the next one, that is a super useful thing. It will show you whatever channel you have selected and the information that goes with it. It contains lots of info and I'm going to do a separate video that covers in detail what you can do with the inspector. 
You've then obviously got a question mark which shows you the nice quick help links. If you are new to Logic, absolutely switch that on and then everything you're hovering over will give you some information there. Or just keep plowing through my videos. Uh, if you drop this down, this gives you some advanced editing tools here. I mainly use this for colours, if I'm honest, so that I can colour my tracks later on because most of the things that are in here I can do with shortcuts. And we're going to cover shortcuts in a future video as well. This here brings up controls for particular Logic plugins. So if we were to so if, for example, we were to add a logic-based plugin to something, let's say software, and then let's grab do, do, do. yeah, let's grab just grab the EF one. <laughs> You'll see now that when this feature here is engaged, which is your smart controls it will give some basic controls preset down here for whatever plugin is engaged and if an EQ is on it will also add an EQ and bring up the EQ bands there for you. I tend not to work too much in this view but some people find it really useful. The second one along is your mixer and we'll be covering a lot of the mixer because it is a massively integral part in getting your track to sound correct. And then we've got editor and we'll be covering the editor as well because the editor takes in all your audio editing as well as things like time stretching and flex pitch all happens there in the editor. If we go into the middle section here, we've got your transport controls. Now they're pretty customizable. Um, most of the time you'll have beats and project or beats and time and you can change those by clicking this little down arrow here. I do have my own custom one, which will also show me a lot of extra information as well as my hard drive and CPU usage. So as I mentioned, I need to manage that quite a lot. But most of the time, you just have it here to customize it. You do customize control bar and display and enable the things that you require, however best suits yourself. Um, over here, we have then got, so list editor, Notepad, Apple Loops, and the browsers. Now, the list editor, when you have lots of audio, will show you each individual piece of audio and the information and time markers of where that is. You can also quantize audio from in there. We're going to look at that when we go into grooves and editing audio. Um, the notes will be for adding projects. I sometimes will write lyrics out in here and edit lyrics and things as they're going along, or I will sometimes put mix notes in here as well, although I'll mainly add those to the mixer. Apple Loops is your Apple Loops library, so all the audio loops that come with Logic, and then the media folder is all the media on your machine. It's like a, just a browser for you to get to your custom samples. For example, I would go all files into my Lacey drive, sample archive, and then my sample archive is organized here. So that is the basic layout and overview of Logic. We'll be covering more features in detail as we go through these videos. I shall, guys, see you on the next one. Thank you very much.